In this video, we're going to look at the XTF raster factory in RAMP. So XTF stands for Extensible Triton Format, and it's a common format for storing analog geophysical data. When I say analog, I mean uh, data like echo sounder information, side scanning sonar, and sub bottom profiler information. But it's most commonly used as a exchange format for side scanning sonar data. So let's open up the processor and you can see there are a number of different methods within the XTF uh, raster factory. Um, and the first in the same way that it applies to segwi and the consberg files, the first is a report content of an XTF file. So let's go and do that. That's the first step is inspect what's inside the XTF file. So I've picked my XTF file. I've told it that I want it to calculate the spatial extents. I know that this XTF file is, is projected, so uh, I don't need to specify an ellipsoid in here, and I can choose an output file to report the content to. If I leave it blank, the content is reported to the process info window, so let's do that. Okay, and let's inspect it. Okay, so it gives me a whole series of information about the uh, XTF file, including its uh, format descriptor, which software <clears throat> was used to record the sonar data, um, how many channels are in the uh, data set. You can see there's two sonar channels in here. There are no bathymetric channels and no snippet channels. And it gives um, various information about <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, the channels in, in that particular XTF file. It then goes on to explain each of the uh, channels. So uh, the first sonar channel, <clears throat> known as subchannel zero, is actually the port side um, sonar channel for the side scan sonar that was um, used to record this information. Um, and the second channel, subchannel one, is the starboard channel of the side scan sonar. It then gives us, this is important information to note, ping statistics, so it's saying <clears throat> the average separation between each ping spatially is 0 0.58 meters, and the average separation of the samples is also about 0 0.58 meters. So this gives us an ex uh, a estimation that the, re the effective resolution of this um, side scan data set is about 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 meters. The average range that the side scan was getting was 122.5 meters. <clears throat> Here are the uh, calculated spatial extents of the of the data. So that's what's in the um, content report for an XTF file. And specifically, I want to take note of the ping statistics, uh, the ping separation, and the sample separation before I import my XTF file. Well, now that I know that, let's go and actually import the XTF file now. So I'm going to choose my XTF file. It already told me that it was about 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 meter um, resolution. So I'm going to leave it at 0 0.5 meters. I can choose now to specify to import just a portion of the XTF file um, by specifying the number of packets that I want to read or the range of packets I want to read within that XTF file. If I start at zero and end at negative one, that implies that the entire XTF file will be read. Again, I don't need to specify an ellipsoid, but if I had an ellipsoid, uh, sorry, if I had geographical coordinates in my XTF file, I could choose the ellipsoid to which uh, those geographical coordinates are applied. In my case, this is all projected data, so I'm not going to bother with uh, the ellipsoid. So uh, fill null iterations. This is a um, an iterator that fills in any gaps that might be left um, in the side scan data. So we know that it's 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 meters roughly. If I specified this any lower, there'd be lots of holes in the data that you'd be able to um, see, particularly as the side scan might be uh, making a maneuver and turning. It tends to leave holes where the um, where the outer edges of the of the uh, turn are, are not being imaged properly. So this is an iterator that goes through and tries to fill in those gaps through inter interpolation. Four seems to be a pretty good value if your cell size is 
pretty close to the um, effective um, resolution of the data set. So we'll leave this at four. But you can experiment with this if you're if you are trying to um, trying to import the side scan data at a higher resolution, say 0 0.1, you might want to make this up to 10. Um, but we'll leave it at four. That's probably a little bit too much as well, but let's give it a go. So let's click OK and we'll import this XTF file. I should note actually that the um, XTF importer expects that the port channel will be subchannel zero and the starboard channel will be um, subchannel one. So if um, if that's not the case in your XTF file, the import uh, routine may struggle to uh, deal with it. Um, that's something that in future the software will probably be modified so that you can explicitly say, hey, my port channel is this subchannel and my starboard channel is this subchannel, but we haven't implemented that yet. Okay, let's render this XTF now that it's been uh, brought in and let's uh, clip out a, an area of interest, let's say this area here and render that. Let's apply some more traditional type um, side scan rendering. So we'll choose a grayscale palette here. Um, we will choose one standard deviation to stretch it and we'll invert it. Okay, so here we go. This is a classic sort of display of side scan information. The reason that the importer takes uh, quite a long while is because it's actually uh, geocoding all of the uh, ping information. So it has the center line, it has the heading, it has the slant ranges or the ground ranges of all the samples. So it's doing quite a lot of work to uh, georeference this uh, spatially. The other thing you'll note is the, the, the white band down the middle of the side scan image. This is actually the water column where no signal is being recorded until the side scan um, records the first return from the seabed. Now, we haven't implemented automated bottom tracking in this algorithm, so the water column information is, is displayed, um, and sometimes that can be useful information uh, in terms of looking at biologicals in the signature in the, signature in the water column, um, but we haven't done um, bottom tracking to remove the water column from the mosaic, and that's something that we'll probably introduce in a future iteration of this um, algorithm. So let's go and have a look at some of the other um, methods in the XTF raster factory. We've looked at report content and imports. Uh, I have another import option which is very similar except it will split the, uh, import, uh, the input XTF file into a series of tiles based on a width, a certain width of or a range of, of packets. So, we, or pings I should say. So. Um, we might choose uh, to export every 5,000 pings in the XTF file to a separate raster. And the reason that's there is just so that uh, ease of handling. Sometimes it's easier to handle smaller rasters um, as you go rather than one big long one, which tends to store a lot of superfluous null data. But apart from that, um, most of this is um, exactly the same. You have the option here to um, write file information. Um, and that is uh, that is um, writing all of the well, writing firstly the content report. But if you choose to write ping headers, it'll also export the um, spatial information at the center line for each ping. Um, so maybe we should actually have a look at that. Let's choose uh, let's choose a smaller uh, XTF file for speed of processing. Cell size 0 0.5, pings per, per tile is going to be 5,000. Let's make that 1,000. Now let's make that 2,500 pings per tile. We don't need an ellipsoid. That's going to be the same. Let's choose the output folder. It's going to be my sample data area. And we're going to say write info file and write ping headers. Let's see what this does. So I'll get rid of that one. In our case, the, it's imported the, um, there you go, there wasn't very many pings in it, but uh, it's imported the 
XTF file into a series of tiles. In this case, it's created two tiles. This one has <clears throat> 2,500 pings in it, and this one has whatever the total number of pings minus 2,500 was. Let's have a look at what files it wrote to the output directory that we defined. So it's written these two files here. Let's first look at the info file. So I open that with Notepad. And as you can see, this is essentially the content report that we had previously uh, looked at. The second file that it's written is this CSV file. So let's go have a look at what's in this CSV file. And essentially, it is the extraction of the ping headers from the uh, XTF file. So it gives a it gives a time, a packet type. So this is a sonar packet. Talks about the sub channels, how many channels are in there, etc., 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 etc. Some of this information hasn't been recorded, but you can see that there could be magnetometer information in there, water temperature, conductivity, pressure information, turbidity if need be. Um, and then we have the ship's position, and then the position of the sensor, uh, as well as a range of other things in terms of the attitude and orientation of the sensor, etc. So it can be quite useful when you want to look, be looking specifically at the navigational information for the ship and sensor, but also if some of these other fields had been filled in, you could have um, been processing um, CDT, sound velocities, uh, magnetometer information, for example. Uh, in this case, I do note that the magnetometer um, data is actually recorded uh, in here. So that's quite interesting. Let's just have a quick look at uh, plotting that. And there you go. That's the uh, magnetometer information that was recorded with the uh, recorded simultaneously with the side scan data. So um, quite interesting what's in the XTF file. And there's a lot of information that you can get out of that. It's possible, of course, also to uh, be able to map this um, CSV file that was created into a GI <clears throat> excuse me into a GIS package so that you can see the uh, center line. We might have a look at that in a second. So going back to ramp, let's look at what other methods are in the XTF raster factory. So we looked at import with tiles and we looked at what some of the file write information was. Um, you can also choose to export. So this is exactly the same as importing as tiles, except in this case, rather than returning uh, the raster into the ramp graphical user interface, it's written to and uh, the rasters are written to output folder with a certain file format. Um, so that's useful when you don't actually care about returning the rasters into the ramp graphical user interface and you literally just want to generate a series of raster files. <clears throat> um, and again, uh, expanding from that, you can batch import a series of XTF files. So in this case, I choose an input folder. I tell it to look for any .xtf file in that folder. And then my properties are pretty much all the same. It'll go through each of those XTF files and it'll generate new rasters and output them to files in a particular folder. The other one that we can use is the extract run line index for multiple XTF files. So this allows me to um, specify an input folder, a series of XTF files, and specify a shape file in a certain output folder. And that will index the, um, the center line of the sensor. Uh, and again, that's uh, along with attribute information like what file it came from. Um, so that's useful when you want to index spatially where these XTF files are. Let's actually do that, and then let's open up uh, QGIS and look at the shapefile as well as the rasters that we've um, created, uh, and um, and also map some of the uh, CSV file information in there. So let's do that now. Extract run lines for an input folder, <clears throat> and the input folder is going to be sample data. It's going to look for each of the XTF files, and I want to write back out to the sample data folder. And my shape file name will be called SignScan Sonar Run Lines. Okay, let's run that and then open it up in QGIS. Okay, let's add these files into QGIS. So, firstly, I'm going to add the uh, raster. I exported a raster uh, for the side scan data set, and that's here. 
there it is. Doesn't look particularly great. We probably need to play around with the rendering of it. But before we do that, let's add the vector, which was, let's look for Esri shape files, the side scan sonar run lines. There you go. You can see that in the center line there now. And there's another one up here because I had two files in my folder. And let's now add the CSV data that we exported. And let's choose sensor X and sensor Y as the fields and click add. Done, and it's added all those points down here on top of the center line that we created. Right, let's fix the rendering of the side scan data. So stretch to min max, two standard deviations, white to black, apply. Okay. Right, this is looking more like a traditional side scan image now. Let's go in and have a look at what is attributed with my center line. So I'll click on my center line here on my run line. Turn the image off first. Okay. And you'll notice the uh, information that it displays is the file name. So it's indexed the file name along with the center line. Let's go and look now at one of these points. So let's click on one of these points here. And you can see all of the ping header information has been stored with each of these points along the side scan uh, exported CSV file. Let's go render these points now um, based on the um, magnetometer uh, milligors reading. Okay, so I've um, color coded the magnetometer field in the XTF uh, file, and you can see the uh, general sort of drift of the magnetometer here. But interestingly, there's a potential anomaly uh, down here. And in fact, yes, this anomaly relates to this is a cable crossing that you can see in the side scan image here. And so the magnetometer has picked up that cable crossing and we're getting a nice blip in the magnetometer readings. So this has been an introduction to the XTF raster factory. I hope this has been a useful video for you. Thanks.